Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys my recommendations for the top five cameras for video or YouTube under five hundred dollars US dollars, by the way. And if you want to check out the first and third parts of this video for cameras under three hundred dollars and under one thousand dollars. All links for all the products in this video will be in the description. So, let's just kick off this video and start with the Panasonic HC V770. It's expensive, uh, at least for our budget range, but it is no doubt a very, very good camcorder. It records in full HD, uh, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, to even 120 frames per second for 4 times slow motion, and you can even slow it down to something like 8 times in post and still get pretty decent results. It has 20 times optical zoom and 50 times eye zoom, which is uh, pretty sharp, but not as sharp as you get with pure optical zoom. Uh, so 20 times optical zoom, five axis optical image stabilization, which is very very good. And the, the, I'm going to tell you the the stabilization on these Panasonic cameras is really amazing. It has an external mic jack, so you can plug in external microphones to this camera, and this is really great because that will greatly improve your audio. But it does have a built-in mic, so if you don't have the money just yet to spend on an external mic, you can use the built-in mic. You've got a camera function wheel, which I think is pretty nifty. It's something you find on this camcorder and not on other lower budget camcorders, and you can use it to change, smoothly change focus and ISO and aperture and su such things. Uh, it's got a backside illuminated sensor for better low light performance. You can pair your smartphone as like a twin camera to go in the corner of your video, but you can do that in post anyway, and I wouldn't really use that. And it has the flippy screen, so you can do it to take selfies and to look at yourself as you're being recorded, although you can also use your phone, but I know that's a make or break deal for a lot of YouTubers out there. So the downsides, the photos aren't the best because it only has a 6 megapixel sensor, and it is a bit on the pricey side, at least for our budget, but what you get, you get really good value, and note that you don't actually need all that many accessories to make this camera work properly. You don't need extra lenses, you don't need, um, you don't need extra mics because the built-in mic is pretty good, that sort of thing. Uh, but you do have a small sensor, it is a camcorder, which means you get the sort of home video look rather than the cinematic DSLR look. But don't diss that, it's still really good video. And of course you do have the fixed lens, which can be a good or a bad thing. Uh, so the next camera is another Panasonic camera, but it's completely different. It's the FZ300, which is uh, the $497 on Amazon for a new a new model. All the models are for new new models and the highlight is that this camera can record 4K at 30 frames per second. I know it looks like a DSLR sort of camera, but it's not. It's one of those bridge cameras that is sort of meant to bridge the gap between DSLRs and compact cameras, so you cannot take out the lens. Uh, it does shoot 120 frames per second at, at 720p HD, I believe, and to 40 frames per second at VGA, so you wouldn't use it in any professional video production, but just for fun, right? It's got 5-axis image stabilization, it has a mic input, which is also really good. Uh, it has a long 24 times zoom, uh, which is a 25mm to 600mm, 35mm equivalent. And it's got the flippy turnaround screens you can see in the bottom photo there, which is, as I said before, a make or break to a lot of people. And the great thing is it's got a constant f2.8 aperture, so f2.8 means that the, the higher the f-stop, you better low light performance, the more cinematic video you get, pretty much, you get shallow depth of field, and the same with sensor size. So, most cameras when you zoom in, the f-stop lowers like a ton, but this camera has it so that it um, you can smoothly zoom in and out during video, and you won't have to adjust brightness and things. It's got an ele electronic viewfinder, and it's got time-lapse functionality, I know a lot of people uh, like that sort of thing, and it's got a weather resistant body, so that's really good for travel and all sorts of things. Now the downside, you do have a smaller sensor, which is what I was talking about with the f-stops. Um, you only have basic image stabilization in 4K, but it's still pretty good, and I've seen some test videos, and don't be, uh, like it's still good image stabilization in 4K. Uh, the 12.3 megapixel sensor makes for good photos, but not the best compared to DSLRs. You know, it just fits in our price bracket, and although the lens is amazing, it is fixed and you can't change it. So the next camera is a bit of a different camera, it's the GoPro Hero 4 Black, you all know of this, it's $429 on Amazon. 
Uh, the highlights you can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second, 2.7K at 60 frames per second, which is rather unusual actually, but it has 1080p 120 and 720p 240. It's small, compact, easy to use. You have 12 megapixel photos and you can shoot them at 30 frames per second burst rate, although it's not continuous and you can't shoot it like you can in 4K video. It's waterproof up to 40 meters, it's shockproof, it's a GoPro, you can attach it to anything. There are loads of really cool accessories, that sort of thing. Downsides, no mic input, not too much manual control. You can't, you don't have a screen like right on the camera to look at what you're doing. You can buy a screen for $79 or you can use your phone or your iPad or whatever. But still that's a downside, it's not sort of an all-in-one uh, thing. It's got the wide angle lens which is good for a lot of sports things but it's not ideal for all type of video work. So you be mindful of that and you can't change the lens. And the, uh, the battery life is really bad at only one hour because of the extra 4K processing it has to do. So the next camera is actually a, a new release, and at least at the time of recording this video, and it's the Panasonic DMC ZS60K, and it retails for $447 on Amazon. So the highlights are, it can record 4K at 30 frames per second, it's small and it's compact, it's got 30 times zoom, which is 24 to 700 millimeter equivalent, and it's got an 18 megapixel sensor, an EVF, or an ele electronic viewfinder, and a touch screen. So that's really good as well. And you've got image stabilization included with it. Um, but you do have a small sensor and a low max aperture of f3.3, which means you get bad low light quality. You don't get a very shallow depth of field. Pretty much lower quality video and the fix it's got a fixed lens which means you can't take it off it's, it's pretty like long lens but it's not the best lens because of the low aperture and it's got a small grip as you can see it looks sort of flimsy like it's just been glued on with you know yoohoo glue or something and there's no flippy flip flip screen which i know is a downside but i do believe you can use your phone as a secondary viewfinder the last camera is the Nikon D3300. It retails for $446 on Amazon with an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Now, the reason you want to get such a DSLR is because they make for really nice cinematic looking video. Um, you get a nice shallow depth of field, really good low light quality, and DSLRs have interchangeable lenses and optical viewfinders, which is really cool. This camera does not shoot 4K, it's only 1080p 60 which is expected, there aren't very many DSLRs that shoot uh, 4K. There are some higher end Nikon, Nikon ones, but we'll get into that maybe in another video. Um, the, there is mic input, which is really good, and you also have a hot shoe to put that mic on. The sensor is a really big APS-C sort of size FX sensor, which is Nik Nikon's size sensor, which is really, really big. You know, bigger than any, far, far bigger than any of the other sensors we've seen in the cameras previously, and it's got really great lens choice. So, Nikon has a ton of lenses, all sorts of things. Probably the best lens choice out there, beating Canon and all those sort of competitors, maybe even Olympus. So the downsides: there's no flip screen, although I, I'm really not sure whether you can use your phone or not for it. Um, you'll have to check that up, I'm sorry I couldn't provide you with that information. But being a DSLR, it's big and chunky, so if you're a vlogger, you probably won't want to use this camera. It's heavy, that sort of thing. Uh, downside, you know, no 4K, it's it's an older camera, so 1080p60 was very good for that sort of time. And it still is pretty good now, I'm sorry about the plane. Um, and it's got no headphone output, I don't believe, so that's a bit of a shame too. Yeah, so to round this up, for vloggers, I would recommend the Panasonic ZS60K or perhaps the GoPro Hero Full Black um, because it's small and it's easy to use, um, whereas the ZS60K is also small but harder to grip and stuff. Um, for narrative filmmakers, I'd recommend the D3300 and the FZ300 and probably also the Panasonic camera because it's got really good quality video. And a lot of people say, you know, don't use camcorders because they don't have cinematic looking video like DSLRs. But the video is pretty good out of that camera. And uh, 
yeah, but the, ob the obvious option, if you're just narrative filmmaking, I would actually go for the D3300 over the 4K of the FZ300 even, maybe, because it's it's really nice, uh, big sensor, and you can always get lenses and get a better camera later and use those same lenses. Uh, if you're doing, like, beauty videos, makeup tutorials, that sort of thing, I'd recommend, again, the D3300 or the FZ300, um, and for tech reviews, tutorials, etc, I'd recommend the camcorder, you know, the FZ300 and the Nik Nikon D3300, they're all going to do well, except be mindful with those uh, DSLRs and the FZ300, uh, you will have a slightly higher learning curve, and you have to learn a lot about cameras if you want to use a DSLR. Uh, and if you're doing live sort of events, and maybe like, you know, just to give you an example of something, like a prank video, um, I'd recommend primarily the camcorder because they're great for that sort of thing. Um, the FZ300 as well because it's got a good zoom and it's got generally good video quality. The GoPro because it's really small and it's really easy to carry around, but the wide angle lens and the lack of manual control and things does make it a bit of a, bit of a bummer. And before we finish, uh, also one thing I want to say that isn't in the text here, you can use camcorders for pretty much anything, for tech reviews, for the vlogging, they're really light, um, they work really well, and you can pretty much use them for a whole ton of stuff. Um, you won't get the most beautiful video, but you will get very nice video, and camcorders are really great. If you don't know what to buy, just buy a camcorder, because they will be pretty good. Okay, so before we finish, be mindful that the camera isn't everything. You need also great audio, which means you have to get an external mic, such as a Pell mic, or a shotgun mic. I specifically chose these cameras because most of them, or if not, yeah, almost all of them have mic inputs, which is great because that way you can upgrade the audio. Um, and it's very, very good if you can get a camera with uh, with a mic input. Uh, if you do sit down like tutorials or beauty videos, something like that, you may want to invest in some lighting gear as well because that will make your video look better. And do be mindful, if you're looking for a camera for YouTube and you don't know what to do, to start, use your phone if you don't have a camera already. Just use your phone because that will work really, really well for the price anyway. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you like this video, then like it, subscribe, comment down below, and check out the first and third parts of this video for cameras under 300 bucks and $1,000. The links for everything will be in the description, including those two videos. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.